inverse functions so when we have these two tables and we're talking about a function and its inverse if the domain of this function is 1 4 7 10 the range which is the y value is 2 3 4 5 then the inverse is the switch the switch that your domain and range are going to switch places so if this was the ordered pair 1 2 the inverse is the ordered pair 2 1 the ordered pair 4 3 the inverse is 3 4 so you can see consistently that basically the function and its inverse they're going to the domain and range are going to switch um, a one to one function is mentioned it's a function it's said to be one to one if f matches different inputs to different outputs equivalently if and only if the f evaluated at c is equal to the f of d then we say c is equal to d um, and we'll get a little more specific with that and say in a one to one function ex each x value corresponds to only one y value and then in return each y value corresponds to only one x value so for example what's easier to understand is to see something that is not one to one in this particular case this is not one to one because the y value 3 belongs to two different values of x it belongs to the 2 and it belongs to the 3 that word's missing there that number is missing there so this is one that's not one to one and one to one simply means every y, x value has exactly one y value and then each y value corresponds to exactly one x value so decide whether a function is going to be one to one so our question is going to be does f at a question mark equal f at b okay so if my original function is going to be 2x minus 3 and I evaluate f at a that means in this function everywhere there's an x I'm going to plug in an a so that would be 2a minus 3 and then if I turn around and evaluate it f at b that means go up here to my original function and everywhere there's an x put a b so that would be 2b minus 3 so my question right here is to say does f at a equal f at b so I would say 2a minus 3 that's my f of a equals 2b minus 3 and I'm gonna simplify these as much as possible so if I add 3 to both sides it would leave me with 2a is equal to 2b and then if I divide both sides by 2 running into my work but I would get a is equal to B and by definition we're gonna I'm gonna skip back to this last page for a minute by definition it says if you evaluate F at a in our case and F at B then you would get a equals B in our particular example and we did get that we evaluated this and we got a equals B so we would say yes this is one to one So this example used more um, of our variables and we left it have just an A and a B term. Over here we're going to pick some specific values and actually calculate it with some numbers. So um, we're going to let's evaluate F at 2. I'm just going to specifically choose a value for X and say let's check F at 2. That means everywhere there's an X x squared plus 5 in our original function right here I'm gonna plug in a 2 that means 2 squared is 4 and then 4 plus 5 is going to be 9 so that means um, up here I'll keep in mind f of 2 equals 9 and then I'm also gonna check our f of negative 2 negative 2 squared plus 5 is negative 2 times the negative 2 is positive 4 plus 5 is 9 as well so what I'm looking at is f of 2 is 9 and f of negative 2 is 9 that means this is not 
1 to 1. And that actually is an example in, of what this case, this case happened to be. Because this is the ordered pair 2, 3, and this represents the ordered pair 3, 3, and we can see that our concern is here. Like in our example, our concern is here. Two different x values is mapped to the same y value, so that in this particular example is not one to one and we use numbers here. We use the definition here using our A and our B. The next uh, tool that we have is a horizontal line test. If a function's one to one, um, we say it's only one to one if no horizontal line except intersects the graph more than once. So when we talked about a function, we would use vertical line test. Well, now we're talking about one-to-one, -one, we're going to use a horizontal line test. So this, the concept is similar. So if I drew a horizontal line, it should only touch my function in one place. So since that's the case, I'm going to say, yes, this is a one-to-one. Uh, -one. On this particular problem, if I do a horizontal line, it touches in more to one, more than one place, so I'm going to say, no, this is not a one-to-one -one function. And same thing on this one. So my question to you is, if I draw a horizontal line, whoops, struggling with that. If I draw a horizontal line, it can only touch my graph in one place, so it doesn't matter if I draw my horizontal line here or if I drew it up here. It's only going to touch it one place, so would you say that's horizontal or not? Horizontal. I mean, uh, it's a horizontal line, excuse me, would you say it's one-to-one -one or not? So we would say yes, that's one-to-one -one because it passes the horizontal line test. All right, so now on the algebraic side of things, we're going to talk about inverse functions. And we're going to say, um, we're going to recall this composite function, the g of f of x is equal to x for all the x in domain of f, and then the f of g of x is equal to x then we say that these two functions are inverses of one another. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this composition of function and see if our answer is x. We're going to take this composition of function and see if our answer is x. If both of them simplify to x, then we know we have inverse functions. Okay, so Let's just see an example of this. So the first thing I want to do with this one is take my f of g of x, which means f of g of x if I wrote it in working form like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in g of x. Well, this is my g of x right here. So that would just be 1 third x minus 2. Okay, all I did was replace g of x with this value right here. This says go to the f function, and everywhere there's an x right there, we're going to plug this in place of x. So I would have 3 parentheses plus 2. This is my function f. And then now I want to plug 1 third x minus 2 in that position. Okay, when I distribute here, I'm just going to get x. One third times three is just one. And then I will get minus six plus two. So this would give me x minus four. Okay, first of all, my f of g of x did not equal just x. It was x minus four. So essentially, I could probably just stop right there because our definition... Our def definition says when you take the f of g of x, it should come out to equal x. And ours did not. But we're going to keep going just for the purpose of the lesson. And then on this side, I'm going to calculate the g of f of x, which if I wrote it in working form, or g of, excuse me, f of x. The first thing I do to evaluate this composition function is to plug in f of x, which when we come back over here, we see it's 3x plus 2. So I'll say 3x plus 2 
bring down this G. This tells us to go to the G function right here and everywhere there's an X we're going to substitute this value in. So my first step is I'm going to write my G function down and that's this portion right here. So I'm going to say one third parenthesis for the X minus two and then everywhere there's an X I'm going to plug 3x plus 2 in. Distribute. 1 third times 3 is x. 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. Minus 2, I add term, I like terms right here and I'll just get x minus 4 thirds. So when I did the composition the f of g of x, I did not get x. And when I did g of f of x, I did not get x, so I would say not inverses by the definition. These two functions are not inverses of one another.